Hello dear Matrixer friends, here are your Matrixers again, Shiva and Jonathan. And today we're going straight into an exciting topic. Last week we had an experience and then we thought about making a video about it. At the same time that we were thinking about this, someone on Telegram in our Telegram group Matrixer asked whether we could do a topic, a special topic. And an hour and a half later, after we talked about it, we read the message. And yes, you can see the synchronicity again. And that's why we said, okay, if we thought about it at the same time and someone asked a question about it at the same time, then let's just do it. And of course, it's exciting too. What is it about today? Yes, we were asked what things are like with animals. Who incarnates into such an animal, especially pets? And is it even possible that animals can also incarnate? Can people incarnate into animals is also a question that comes up quite often. And we want to address this question today. As you know, we said that here on the 3D level, we live in a simulation, in a computer simulation. And most animals, just like humans, were created by the Matrix AI. But of course, there are exceptions. There are exceptions, especially in the animal sector. This means that a soul does not now incarnate 100% into an animal, because the soul wouldn't learn as much in the sense of the Matrix. However, it is possible that the soul can be partially, i.e. part of the personality, incarnated into an animal in order to have certain experiences, or primarily, I would even say, to support or assist someone in their human incarnation. So to speak. So that means if you're planning maybe in the 22nd century to incarnate you and your best friend on the astral plane, then says, I already have a life in the 19th century. Century, I can't incarnate with you. It's not possible. That's a shame. But I don't know. You're going to buy a dog when you're 16. And I'm going to project a part of myself into that dog. This is a very common procedure on the astral plane where it is also discussed. And as luck would have it, you meet a really great sweet dog when you're 16. Your friend who unfortunately cannot be there for your incarnation then projects a soul part into your pet. Yes, and that's what we wanted to talk about today. Exactly. Also, what happens if the pets die? Do the pets also go into the light? Was a question. What happens to pets when they die? Exactly. That is our topic today. We have a very personal story about this. Also very exciting. Yes, very crazy story. So some people will definitely raise their eyebrows and look critically. But it's a crazy story and we didn't want to keep it from you. But first, let's tell you what it's like in general when animals incarnate. What happens when they leave us again and then our really crazy story. Yes, animals, as you say, can incarnate in parts and are very happy to do so. The main thing is that the cat creatures, they're also called felines, I'm not entirely sure, felines or the orma, these are different breeds of cats that like to incarnate on Earth. These are extremely advanced star seeds that incarnate here, are also not very popular with the people who don't like us all that much because they are very, very powerful and do. Their own thing have their own mind. In any case, there are very, very many of them here on this planet Earth. 
cat creatures that have been incarnated. And our story is also about a cat creature. Anyway, they come to us, support us. Most often they are astral guardians. At least that's how it was for us, primarily. But also emotional support, being cuddly. Yes, some people ask themselves, what is the point of having a cat? They eat the hair off your head, wake you up at 5 a.m. Because they can already see the bottom of the food bowl and the hair around like crazy. They just lie around in the corner the whole time and shed and sleep. And then, yes, they become active at night. And take you to sleep. And every now and then they bring back a great souvenir from nature which usually makes people's hair stand on end. Of course you ask yourself, what's the point of having a cat like that? How did the cat actually manage to gain pet status among people? Because having chickens, for example, is perhaps more practical because at least you have an egg every day that you can eat and eat very healthily. And with cats, yes. What kind of job do they have? Do they even have a job? Are they just decoration? And yes, as Shiva says, these are astral guardians. They don't sleep around all day because they're so lazy, but a cat is able to switch to the astral body within a minute or seconds. And they then observe the astral environment of their owner and ensure that uninvited astral guests do not linger for too long. Yes, and in this respect, the cat is actually a farm animal. Seen that way? Seen that way. Just like we do for well, those up there. The cat doesn't necessarily lay eggs that you can eat, but they are very popular on the astral plane. This is also one of the reasons why we often hear or read in history that witches like to have cats. Or the pharaohs. Or the pharaohs, because the pharaohs and the ancient Egyptians were also very familiar with the astral plane. And they also discovered that cats are excellent guardians. Look at the Sphinx sitting there, also like a guardian. And so the cats often sit on the back of your chair or on the back of the couch or somewhere else like a guard and just examine the surroundings. Is there an uninvited astral guest coming? And if so, I'll grab it. And cats can get pretty nasty on the astral plane when an uninvited guest comes. They jump on your back or jump in your face or enlarge themselves and scare the astral visitor or something like that. So anything like that is possible for a cat. Yes, the cat creatures incarnate just like us, even with amnesia. For example, they can incarnate into humans. We even personally know a cat creature. Lots of size and place. I was just about to say. In any case, they are also not aware of who or what they were before. I don't know what it's like with a cat per se. Maybe they are a little more aware, but it doesn't seem like that to me, not necessarily. Yes, most animals are just like us, covered in oblivion and do their job here or play their game here, gain experience, and when they're done with it, they practically go home again. Depending on how big or how much the soul part was, it can also happen very rarely that a really larger part was there. It either goes back again, for example, cat creatures then go back into their body on... the 5D level and then play their continue their feline life. Or they go back to the astral plane, for example, to visit or assist their owner. Or they just walk around there all the time until at some point someone appears again who they are very familiar with and who...
they would like to be with. So very different. But that's right. So on the 5D level, outside the 3D matrix, that is, in the 5D matrix, in the free matrix, as we also call it, or the digital matrix. The situation there is that it then go back to their cat being, to their cat body that they have there in the free matrix. It is also the case that, as you say, on the astral plane, when pets have died, they remain with their master. And as soon as the owner thinks that it would be nice to have a dog or a cat like that and buys a new one, animal beings on the astral plane reincarnate into the dog or cat that has... just bought the new hair. That means in reality your cat or dog friend will accompany you throughout your life as long as you have animals. Most of the time they are the same ones who then reincarnate again and again into the new body and accompany you. But even if you don't buy a new pet, you can be pretty sure that your cat or dog friend or horse friend, whatever, is accompanying you astrally so they are really there by your side. They don't actually go away until you go too. Well, they really like doing that. If necessary, they will wait for your entire incarnation period and walk around you astrally and wait until you complete your incarnation in your current life so that they can then expect and receive. You, and occasionally there are new entry points for a pet that makes me think, oh look, he's bought a new dog. I think I'll go in there again. It is then possible for someone to think about it. This doesn't happen that often, but it does happen every now and then, I would say. In this sense, the animals do not go into the light since they are often really only parts of a whole or personality that are then withdrawn again. So they don't go the same way as us, but they then reconnect with the overall personality. So you don't have to go through the light process now, because if the personality stays in 5D, for example, it goes back into the 5D body. That's the best way I would describe it. We're not saying that all pets really have to have a soul part. There are also toys from the Matrix, for example. These are pets created by the Matrix AI that you then have. So it's entirely possible that you might also have an extra pet. But from a personal emotional level, I would say that I have the feeling that pets are really companions when there is one in them. It doesn't have to be that way in general, that's true, but it's just a feeling now that pets are more likely to have a soul compared to a pigeon that flies past you, which is 100% matrix AI generated. So you can also check whether your own pet is just an extra pet or whether there might be one in there. You just have to ask yourself what kind of behavior the pet has. Does it behave more like an animal that only thinks about eating? Instinctively, it is instinctive and would certainly be like that of an animal somewhere in nature or whether it somehow has human traits, I'll say. and tries to talk to you or something like that, of course, in cat language, but is somehow always open to communication, or maybe you always have the feeling, no, it can't be that he can bring something like that. So a normal animal wouldn't do something like that. Then you can be pretty sure that there is a part of the personality of a good friend of yours in there. Alternatively, you can, of course, also query again via the dreams. Is there one in there now or not? For example, your pet talks to you in a dream, or if you are astral, you can meet it there. And talk to it. So you can, of course, find out astrally and through dreams whether this is a real pet or an extra.
Yes, you have to ask yourself what that is like. And I think many of you will probably also have a feeling or an intuition about it. Yes, and that's why we really want to tell you now what happened to us or what we learned. The story of Bo. The story of Bo. The story started, I would say, 2008. I got a cat, and we didn't know each other then. But this cat was only with us for a month. Again, for preliminary information, we also like to call the boo the suicide boo. But more on that later in the story. At least it may have been around 2008 or 2007. I don't remember exactly. I really wanted to have a cat. And then I got that too. She was so extremely sweet. I think he was the cutest cat on the planet. That was my cow. No, it was really a very cute cat. So a main cow cat in red with white lobes, milled, very fluffy baby-sized. Anyway, very sweet. And yes, she didn't stay with me for long, just about a month. Oh, what's happening? She killed herself. Like that? She hanged herself. Oh, okay. In any case, that was a good thing because I was extremely sad. Extremely sad at the time. For an animal that you only had for a month, this phase of sadness has lasted a long time. And the connection with him was extremely strong, considering he was only there for a month. Anyway, a year and a half later, I got Frank when he was only eight weeks old. Frank still accompanies us, as you can often see in the videos. He then had a baby around 2010. Frank had a baby. Okay, Frank actually had several babies, four. Anyway, I actually chose one of these babies. The others were distributed throughout the shared apartment or assigned to other people. And I had chosen one, but unfortunately that didn't last long either. The intestines were still out there. It had to be put down relatively quickly. So I took the one that was left over, and that was the bow. So it should be the bow again. Yes, as it turned out, at some point we got to know each other. You also experienced Bo for a long time. And yes, the Bo was very special. Yes, that was a strange cat. Well, not in a negative sense, but it had quite strange behavior from my point of view, where I would say, this is not a normal cat. Weird acting, but so does Frank. Frank has rather unusual behavior. But Bo, he was quite strange. I also like to call him the Dibri cat sometimes. Yes, he longed to go home to 5D. So he was never really 100% happy as a cat, I would say. He was extremely people-oriented and extremely affectionate. So he was always with us, always cuddling, and even in bed at night, he was always there. And it was very special, yes. It was always exciting to watch when we sat on the couch and watched a great movie or something. A cat on the left on the armrest, a cat on the right on the armrest, like the Sphinx. Sat and always looked, always watched. Always guarded? Always guarded, exactly. It was really phenomenal to watch that. Now Frank had to do the job alone, yes, anyway. One day Suicide Bo decided he had to go home to 5D. He has to go back. He has to go back, and we also got the information. So here's the story about it. We were now in Mexico, and there Bo, yes, after a few months he decided, I felt that before, and I also told 
him, okay, if you have to go, then you have to go, please, I'm really sad, and I, I think it's really stupid of you, but if you have to go, then that's okay. Just go, then I just told him that he could go, and yes, he did that too. He decided he would eat the only poisonous plant in this place where we live to go home. There weren't many poisonous plants there. It only took him two days. But they weren't nice days, but at least after two days, our brother said goodbye for us. Yes, I still remember that Bo tried everything in the garden. He even ate cobwebs to see what would happen. Once he arrived with a lot of cobwebs on his face, he tried eating them all to see what the effect was. So he apparently didn't know 100% which of the plants were poisonous and which weren't, and he tested it out. Hoping he catches some plant that is very poisonous. That was my impression. What's also interesting is that if the first cat hadn't hanged himself back then, I wouldn't have gotten Frank, and then Bo wouldn't have been there either. I saw the feline creatures behind both cats. The Bo is about a three and a half meter tall black cat creature with an extremely crass charisma. We can talk about that in a moment. And Frank is also a very powerful cat creature, very exciting, very feminine, I think. So on 5D, here he is more of a little bully, but a very nice one. No, it's really sweet. Anyway, I saw them both in their original bodies, and Bo told me astrally when I met him in his cat that he had to go on a mission. That's why he had to kill himself again. He has a mission as a 5D cat creature, a suicide mission. I have no idea why he always does that. Anyway, that was kind of... Yes, he had to go on a mission with his cat creature buddies and... On a suicide mission? Yes, exactly, suicide mission, that's the word. In any case, he didn't survive the show either. I found it interesting that when Bo was lying with us again the night before he died, he came to you, Astrali. He asked you for permission, right? Yes, he asked us both for permission. And Frank too? Yes, he also informed Frank, right? That's why Frank was pretty composed when Bo left. So he just hung out on the bed for a day and was a little sad, but the next day he was okay again. Well, that was my impression. Yes, he said yes. Bo told Frank what you said to Austral. Yes, Frank was actually his mother, physically speaking. Is it okay if he leaves? And then Frank said what you said, so I didn't experience that. He experienced that. Frank would then have said, yes, of course, I would just like to be alone with the two of them and spend my time only with them. It's okay, you can go. Yes, yes, just Frank then somehow said, I would like to be a bit of a cuddly cat, the cuddly cat. Because Frank always let Bo go first when it came to cuddling or some tender caresses or something like that. When both cats were there, Frank always let his child go first and then mostly stayed in the background. Yes, when Bo left, phew, I have to say, I've never experienced anything like that. The Bo is a really, really powerful cat creature. He has such a powerful charisma, you can't imagine it. So suddenly it was so empty, the space, as if everything was suddenly missing. like we were sleeping on a bare floor or something. So really, that was, yes, that was very impressive. So while he was physically with us, you didn't really notice it, the charisma he has. 
because he was there every day, you got used to it and everything. But when he was gone and we went back into the apartment building for the first time in Mexico after we had buried him, you noticed what... was missing. And based on what was missing, Bo's charisma, we could measure what he actually had for himself, how immense his charisma actually was, how strong it was. Yes, but the story goes on. We got some chicken about six weeks ago. Chicken? Oh, well. The chickens are the ones you eat. Anyway, we got chickens, six pieces. Now we have five more. Why do we have five more now? Yes, the self-board rehearsal was there again. We also got the information. I don't understand it, but whatever. In any case, here in our garden, he used the only opportunity to kill himself that could possibly exist here. Interestingly, this was the one chicken that I really liked. The chicken was called Bok. I always petted him. He was also the only one who always came to me and let me pet him. I put him to bed every night. He didn't sleep on the perch on the house with the other chickens. He always slept separately on his own perch. His special manner, he's really unique there. In any case, I had to put him to bed every night and put him on his perch because he couldn't get there on his own. He probably would have come already, but maybe he just wanted to be put to bed. I stroked him, so I really liked him. You might also want to mention that Bo said he was coming to see you on vacation. Yes, that's right. I found that very interesting, and we always thought, like, on vacation... It sounds like he'll be coming over for a few weeks and we certainly won't be getting a new cat. Nope. Or any other animal, certainly not. So we spent a long time wondering how it would be possible for Bo to come to us on vacation. We couldn't explain that at all. Nope. We thought, no, no, he probably won't find an entry point to make that possible. And then what? Then we got chickens. Then we thought, let's get some chickens. Bo must have already known that. He must have known that. And that's why he was able to say, I'll come over to your place again on vacation. Interestingly, the Bo is black in the original 5D body. Our cat Bo was also black. And the chicken it was in was also big and pretty black. It had about 70% black feathers with a little bit of white in there. In any case, he was always powerful and black. He was also the biggest of the chickens. From chickens and cats. And laid such eggs. He has very big balls, but whatever, he has to figure it out on his own because he's back home and living with his balls. Yes, we'll definitely have a joke or two there. Yes, when we get back. Anyway, after four weeks, we suddenly went out and wanted to go to the cafe, and I had a wheelbarrow ready in the garden, and I planted a tree in it. A bit of a kind of ivy. It's not ivy, but something like that. In any case, the chickens always thought that was great. We tossed everything up and destroyed it until there was no ivy or growth left in it. Then the chickens ignored the wheelbarrow for weeks. Ignored for about four weeks. Was there no one left in it or around it or no idea? Yes, it's gotten boring. Just like for children. At some point it just gets boring. Yes, because it was broken. We ate everything we liked and we were done. Anyway, we go to the cafe and then I say, oh, look what nonsense they've done. They overturned the wheelbarrow. And then we walk past it and there was a chicken lying there. I thought, oh, look, he's chilling under the wheelbarrow. He's in the shadows. Permanently. It's not that funny. I was really sad, but it's also funny because it's suicide, where we fell in love with the boy, but he's stupid. Well, anyway, it was under the wheelbarrow, permanently. Yes, the wheelbarrow fell over, whatever, because it's quite heavy with all the earth and plants in it. It fell over and right on his neck.
And what is the probability that on a large property where there are actually no possibilities for suicide except for this one that no one has thought of and that one too? It is very difficult to realize. That means he must have persuaded the other chickens while he was under the wheelbarrow to make the other chickens jump on top with all their might so that the wheelbarrow would tip over to the side. So I can't imagine it any other way. How likely is that? In any case, he took advantage of the only opportunity because he had to go back home. I was very sad, and then I said that to Jonathan. So tell me that's really weird, isn't it? It doesn't feel anything like the bow. It suddenly feels like we only have 10% chickens left, but only one out of six is gone, and then you like that? True, that's crazy. Yes, that's right. Then you felt again that a part was missing. And it was the same presence, and I'm like, shit, that was Bo. That was the self-word Bo again. And I lay down in bed, and I really wanted to know that. Was that the Bo? Was that the Bo? I'm so sure it was the Bo. And I waited for the answer, yes, then we wake up. And then you sit with me, all excited. Look, I have to tell you something I just experienced. I have to tell you who was there just now. Yes, I have always tried to establish communication with Bo on occasion. Bo always came by and always made a strange noise for a cat, namely always like that. What do you wanted to drink while alive? Yes, yes, to say here I'd like a drink or something or I'd like attention or I'd like you to do something for me or something else. It wasn't always something more like that. And of course, I always tried to communicate with him. I always said to him, And once or twice I managed to get him to respond exactly the same way when I made the noise. So he looked at me and made that noise again. And that night when Shiva had just asked for nap, I think, or nap, right, to say whether he was really the chicken. But I don't think you got an answer. No, I just fell asleep straight away. And then I felt that he was there when I was astral. And I was just astral in the astral body. And then he came by, but I didn't see him. I just heard him. And what did he do? But really loudly in my ear so that I can just hear it. You said it was so loud, it was like I was sitting next to you and making noise in your ear. Yes, that was easily 100 to 120 decibels, so it was very, very loud. And of course I was startled, was back in my physical body and thought, oh, look, he was visiting. He had truly made good on his promise and was there on vacation. How long was the black chicken there? Four weeks. Four weeks? Yes, it's typical vacation time on Earth, right, I would say. Now he has to go back to the mission, probably, probably not, because the story actually goes on a bit. At some point I got the information from Obnagog that all Bo selves are being collected. Yes, the story about Bo is really exciting, and in every reality I've been in, the Bo was dying or wasting away or already dead. That is, the wholeness of the Bo is currently collecting all the Bo selves and warping out of the matrix. But it seems to be dragging on a bit, at least according to our perception of time, because he told me that about a year ago, or the higher self of Bo told me that a year ago, that the Bo selves are being collected. After all, he had just been there for another four weeks. But I find it very interesting, because that means that Bo will leave the Matrix in the near future, since Bo is dying and... every reality, no matter how, and leaves again or kills himself again. Yes. But cats can also do this consciously, or animals can do this consciously. Perhaps we should also mention that animals can also consciously kill themselves and decide to leave when it is necessary for them to leave. So it's not a coincidence. Theoretically, you don't have to be sad, even if it is sad, or if you suck it up. I think dolphins can do that too. They can stop living themselves. Well, dolphins, for example, are conscious breathers, not like humans. They are subconscious breathers. They don't actually breathe themselves, humans. But dolphins are conscious breathers, and they have to be somewhere if they have to keep surfacing and taking a breath. 
And of course, they can decide to stop breathing at any time. Dolphins do this successfully too. When they have lost their partner, it often happens that the dolphin that is left behind says to itself, yes, then I don't. Want to live anymore, then I'll stop breathing and pop. They stop breathing and then die. And yes, but just because you breathe subconsciously doesn't mean that it isn't also possible to choose suicide in another way. And a lot of animals do that too. This is also often practiced in nature. That part of your personality would like to experience what it's like as a hedgehog. and runs around as a hedgehog for a while, but in order to leave the body again, it has to end life. So that he doesn't, let's say, how long does such a hedgehog live? Three years, five years, that he is in a hedgehog body all the time? And he might not be keen on that, so what does he do? Runs across the street at the most opportune or unfavorable moment. Then he is out of the body again. Exactly, dogs also do this when they run across the street. So. If animals want to go, they will find a way to go. But it's not like people who then end up in hell, at least depending on their state of consciousness, and have to work through their karma, and, as I said, animals do that consciously. They leave because they want to leave. People who kill themselves continue in the next life or wherever they end up. On the astral plane, exactly where they left off in life, if they have stopped wanting to live due to depression, they continue astrally and in the next life too. But that's not the case with animals. Animals leave because they have to go or want to go, or because the experience is over. This has to be said very clearly. So you won't end up in hell. Exciting topic, I would say, about animals and the history of the Po. Yes, definitely. And that's why we assume that all the rabbits and hedgehogs that may have been run over on the country roads we strongly assume that they chose this death. Just to end their existence, either out of compassion for the offspring, maybe there wasn't enough food or something, or some part of the soul wanted to experience being a bunny for a week or whatever. These possibilities exist in the matrix that you can take over a body. And lives in him for a while. And we all did that permanently, for example. So Shiva has chosen a body that she carries around with her all her life and in my case too. A body related permanent but there is also the possibility of taking over bodies for a short time, for a day, for a weekend, for a week, for a month or whatever. Just as you feel like going on a vacation, in the 3D matrix there are also some species that like to do that for one reason or another. Anyway, we really wanted to tell you the story of Bo the suicide break, which always somehow, how should I put it, always made an emotional impression on me. Sometimes an always very emotionally intense, volunteered for every Desmond mission. That's how it seemed to me. But he was also the gentlest and sweetest and most tender and balanced and harmonious cat or being on this planet that I have experienced here. Yes, that's true. And he was also the fattest cat I've ever met. So, not fat, no, I wouldn't say fat, but the biggest, I think it weighed eight kilos or something. But it was also the biggest chicken or the fattest? Yes, and it was the same with the chickens. This was the biggest and fattest chicken. But this presence has to go somewhere. That can't fit into such a small cat core. I would have liked to see him as a mouse. Yes, dear ones, that was our topic, our really exciting topic. What happens to the animals? Or what about the animals? Exactly. Tell us about your exciting experiences. Do you also have a suicide animal that keeps coming to you and incarnating? Write us in the comments. 
Yes, or tell me about your strange stories that you have experienced with your cats, dogs, horses, or anything else where you would say, well, that's not an extra animal, so an extra animal wouldn't do something like that. Yes, exactly. Yes, anyway, thanks for watching as always, and see you next week. All love. See you soon. Bye. Community captions.